live. Hello everybody, this is take two of the Benedetti Foundation because if you're going to see what happened here a few minutes ago I was totally on the wrong page um, and so we're a few minutes late. I'm sorry about that, it's just how things have happened uh, today and it, <laughs> it's a live show <laughs> and uh, you may find that the uh, uh, picture wobbles, if so it wobbles. Too bad. Okay, let's start uh, as we always do with rhythm, groove, feel. So I want you to click with me. There. Ready? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. When I stop playing, you keep clicking. You ready? Keep clicking. That's great because everything that we're doing in this improvisation is to do with rhythm, feeling a groove, feeling a beat and whatever you're playing, I know you're thinking about tone, you're thinking about phrasing, but really I want you to think about groove, feel and you'll find that also my uh, colleagues on this, Elsa, Patrick, Robin, we're all saying the same thing, it's about feeling and it's about groove and if you saw that fantastic video that Kate that was shown yesterday on the Andrew Marshall of the tutors playing um, Tchaikovsky it was incredible what a groove what a feel it was fantastic okay so let's continue the groove thing a little bit more um, let's see if you can do this with me we're going to do uh, Paganini in five ready If you like that groove, go and listen to the recording of the Dave Brubeck Quartet playing Take 5, because you've just been playing in 5. It's simple. It's all to do with the feel. Now, by 5 o'clock today, um, all the submissions will be in of you improvising on the Paganini theme, which I've given. And I hope that you are all uh, going to have a go even if it means you just play one you know, two or three bars film yourself doing it and put it in um, I should also say that if you're watching this video if this is the first one you've watched you really need to see the previous two to understand where this is coming from where this is going um, because it's it's a, there's been a developmental thing going on through the three um, sessions. So if you find this all a bit heavy, if it's your first time, go back and look at version one and version two. So our Paganini theme, which is here, this, can, this is all on the Benedetti Foundation page. You can find it and you can hear the backing track. So today, even if you can improvise just using the really simple techniques that I've talked about, like the bass line. All over the top goes. Even that bass line could become. You could play it in any 
octave. If you start using the guide tones, then you could do. If you can play up and down the triads, that's the, and that all this is written out for you, then you can get this sort of thing going. So, so if I'm going to improvise, I might think, oh, okay, I'll do four bars just using the bass notes. Then four bars using the guide tones. Now I'll use the arpeggios. to tell you a little bit about why um, it's important to practice your scales. So I'm giving you a little challenge. Um, I practice my scales every day and I'm not saying that because I'm a good boy or anything like that. It's because I need to. So I'm going to ask you now, wherever you are, tell me what is the most difficult scale that you've got and I'll show you how to improvise on it. Hit the button, let's see. What is a difficult scale for you to play? If I can get two or three in different keys, I'll show you why it's a, you need to practice. Let's see if I've had any response. Just think of when you're practicing, if there is scale. F major. F major. Okay, let's, I'll start on F major and let's have another one. F sharp major. F sharp major, right. D flat. Good. Okay, stop there. We've got F, F, F sharp. sharp, and D flat. A minor if you want it as and well. And D minor. A minor. A minor. Okay, I'm just going to write this down. Okay, so this is a live show. F, F sharp, D flat. B flat. Oh, they're sorry. all coming in F sharp major. Okay, F sharp major, I think it was D flat after that, and then D minor. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold it there. So, I'm going to just improvise now, and I have no idea what's going to happen. No idea at all. I'm going to improvise using the scale of F, F sharp, D flat, and then D minor. What's going to happen? I don't know. Let's have a go and see. But you realise that my head is on the chopping block because if I make a mess of this, if I get this wrong, you're all going to think that guy, Richard Michael, is a complete and utter phony. Oh dear, I've built up a little bit of pressure. Can this work? Okay, so I'm going to start on F, going into F sharp, and I'm just going to improvise using scales. The odd arpeggio, but here's my weapon. Here's my safety net. My metronome. So I'm listening to that click. Four, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Flat. 
you go home. If you like that, click like. No, I had no idea, no idea at all what was going to happen when I played there. But my message to you all out there, wherever you are in the world, is that when you practice uh, with real attitude, with total intention, your scales, arpeggios, in all keys, again, depending on the level that you're at, it opens up this marvellous world of improvisation. Because when you speak, you use language that you understand. You don't have to write down, I like playing the violin, and then say it. You just say it because you like playing the violin. Now, when I cry uh, on my head, conjure up a phrase, in my head I can hear that almost like a, an absolute millisecond before I play it. And I know, look, see this? There's 88 notes here. And in my head, I know what every one of them sounds like. I have got them all in my head. If you practice, I promise you there will come a time when you can do that as well. Now, we're just going to take a little break while we adjust the camera so that it's, um, I don't have to have my wife holding this in place. So excuse us just for a moment. Okay. That's, I don't okay. understand. Okay. Okay, um, and if the volume could be turned down on the hi-fi, that'll stop that noise coming through there. It's a bit like it, this. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> the great thing about doing a live show, everybody, is that it's a live show. And that um, I remember when I was a music student, my teacher, my piano teacher told me that if you can cope with anything going wrong, you've got to be able to cope with anything going wrong. And uh, little matters like the camera not staying in place because of <laughs> because of the angle it's at, it just happens. There we go. Even if it's squint, that'll do. Okay, I I'm just going to leave it there. And I, I want to tell you. We've done a little bit about scales and explaining how they work. I want to tell you how you develop your musical vocabulary. And I've got to go back to when I was a student. And uh, I remember my teacher gave me this beautiful Bach saraband to play. This sounds like this. I absolutely adored playing that. I couldn't stop myself just playing this over and over again. I absolutely loved it. Now, now, when I was playing that, and this is when I was a student, I thought to myself, I love playing that, that second chord, what is it? It's not a normal minor chord, which would sound like this. It sounds like this. And then I looked at it and figured out it's this note in the middle that, sound, that sounds again. It makes that beautiful sound. I worked out the name of the chord is a D minor 9. And then I thought, hey! When I play a tune called Autumn Leaves, that tune comes into it. So instead of playing Autumn Leaves like this, I'll use Bach's chord and I'll see what happens. So this is a bit, you experiment. So instead of, we now have this. 
transported. Great. And I can use a little bit of Wagner. A bit of James Bond. I can repeat with some passing notes. discovering that wonderful chord that Bach had written and you know this whichever Bach I listen to I get this fantastic inspiration because I think wow how did he do that how, how could I make that work for me and this is what I want you to do when you play something start thinking how can I make that work for me it's it's all possible but you've just got to look at your music with this analytical mind. Don't just play the notes. Figure out why do they sound the way they do. Another piece that absolutely did it for me as a student um, was uh, Walton's Touch of Sweet Lip. It sounds like... It's this chord. Oh. And I found that chord... Um, I wanted to play it again and again. So when I'm sitting playing in church, playing a tune like that's what's written. But I would play and here's that chord coming up. Here it is. Every time I play that tune, which is called The Water Is Wide, I think, thank you very much, William Walton. When I look at Ravel, I hear all my favourite chords. This bit. I think, what a great chord that is. So if I'm playing a tune like Summertime, I'll use Ravel's chords instead of... Oh. Every time you play great music, I'd like you to try and figure out what's happening in there. I, had, uh, I was very lucky that when I was at school, I was at a school called Mackey Academy in Stonehaven. I wonder if there's anybody there from Stonehaven, the northeast of Scotland, um, watching this. Um, I had a wonderful music teacher called Mr. McGinnigal who would play me these lovely sounds and he would say, did you like that, Richard? And I would say, yeah, I loved it. What is it? He'd say, go away and work it out. And I'd almost literally run home, get to the piano and try and figure it out. Because it's trying to figure it out that makes you the musician that you want to be. I can't uh, tell you enough why you should practice, study, think, because it's all, it's all there for you. Um, I'm coming to the end of the broadcast and I'd like to finish up by playing, which I played earlier, but on the wrong page, um, Summertime. Um, and you might find a little bit of Paganini coming out of this as well. Uh, you have till five o'clock tonight to submit your videos. Just even if it's just a few bars, give it a go, play. I don't think there's any questions been coming in. So I'm going to say it's been a pleasure working for, for, with you. I can't wait to see the finished product next uh, weekend. Um, what the Benedetti Foundation is doing just never happened when I was a student because there wasn't that complete breadth of looking at music in all its forms. And that is the wonderful thing. It's the why <clears throat> we are all 
so involved in the Benedetti Foundation. It's fantastic. They've got great leadership and the buzz among the tutors is fantastic. These are people that are going to be lifelong friends, even though we, we may never meet because of the situation of lockdown. So I'm going to leave you with summertime and you never know, there might be a little bit of Benedict of um, Paganini in this. And for some reason, let's get rid of the music. Summertime. Mm -hmm.